This is Mika Seppälä. Hello, everybody. This lecture is an introduction to the concept of limits. If I move a little bit like this, you will see behind me a painting representing Archimedes. Archimedes lived more than 2000 years ago, and he was able to compute areas of domains by approximating these domains by simpler domains for which the area was easy to compute. Then he took limits of these constructions and got the actual area of the domain in question. In this way Archimedes was able to compute the area of a domain under the graph of a parabola, for example. He computed many other areas too and volumes as well by simply approximating these domains and, and these solids by simpler structures for which uh, he was able to compute the area or the volume and then he took limits of this construction. So this is a very powerful central topic in calculus and uh, this is what uh, I will now briefly describe how it goes. Introduction to limits of functions. Here you see two views of the graph of a rather complicated function. The first one is the graph of this function on the interval from negative 1 to 1 and it looks nice and smooth. And the second one, the red graph, has been obtained by zooming into very close to the origin. Here we see some erratic behavior and it seems that the function near the origin gets values zero. Now which is correct. To find the true behavior of this function, we need to take the limit of this function as x approaches 0 and compute that. We say that a function f has the finite limit l at a point x0 if the values of the function f, the numbers f of x, get arbitrarily close to the finite number l as x gets close to x0, but is not x0. This is denoted by writing lim, and then under these letters lim, x right arrow x0, meaning that x approaches x0, and f of x equals l. That is read as limit as x approaches x0, f of x equals l. As an example, consider the function f of x equals x times sine 1 over x. This function is undefined when x equals 0, otherwise it is defined by this expression, and it clearly has the limit 0 as x approaches 0, even though the function is not defined at x equals 0. Here, the graph shows us that the values approach 0, and this can be easily established also precisely mathematically by estimating the values of x sine 1 over x. Now observe that the value of the function f at the limit point has no effect on the limit value if one exists. The limit may exist even if the function is not defined at the limit point like is the case here. But regardless what uh, value the function takes at the limit point, this has no effect on the possible existence of limit and the value of the limit. First steps in computing limits. To compute the limit of a function f at a number x0, the first thing to do is to evaluate the function at x equals x0. If the value of the function is a well-defined number, then in most cases this value is the actual limit. And by a well-defined number, I mean that the substitution x equals x0 does not lead to expressions like 0 divided by 0, or infinity divided by the infinity, or 0 times the infinity, and so forth. Such expressions cause problems to us. But uh, if we do not have such undefined expressions, then in most cases the value of the function at x0 is also its limit. This is true with the uh, algebraic expressions that we have seen so far. 
For an example, let us compute the limit x of x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 as x approaches 1. This can be evaluated at x equals 1. Evaluating x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 at x equals 1 yields 0. Therefore, 0 is going to be the limit also of this expression. We see that more clearly by simply simplifying the expression x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 is x minus 1 times x plus 1 and that divided by x plus 1. x plus 1 cancels out. So x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 is simply x minus 1 and as x approaches 1 certainly x minus 1 approaches 0. Therefore the limit of this expression is 0. So just by direct substitution we may conclude that the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 divided by x plus 1 is 0. The floor function is defined by setting its value at uh, a point x to be the largest integer which is at most x. So floor of 0 is 0. Floor of 0 0.1 is also 0. Floor of negative 0 0.01 is minus 1 and floor of n for any integer n is that integer itself. The floor function satisfies for any x the floor, floor of x is larger than x minus 1 and is at most x. The graph of the floor function is some kind of a staircase. Between any two subsequent integer values the floor function takes a constant value and at each integer value it jumps up by 1. A moment ago I said that when computing limits of functions, then the first thing to do is to substitute the limit value in place of the variable and then simply evaluate this function. If uh, the function evaluates to a finite number, then this finite number is the limit. This is not always true. So substituting the limit value for the variable does not always lead to a correct result for the limit even if the value of the function at the limit point is well defined through the substitution. And an example of that type of a situation is provided by the floor function. So consider the function f of x defined by saying that f of x equals floor of x plus floor of negative of x. Now if x is between 0 and 1, larger than 0 and less than 1, then floor of x is always 0 and floor of negative of x is always minus 1. This means that this function f of x floor of x plus floor of negative of x takes the value minus 1 for all x between 0 and 1 but 0 and 1 not included. Since f at negative of x is the same as f of x by the definition of f, f of x equals negative 1 also when x is between negative 1 and 0. And this means that the limit of this function f as x approaches 0 must be negative 1 because its values near 0 are always negative 1. But its value at 0 is 0. Substituting 0 in place of x in the definition of, of the function f of x gives us immediately the value 0 for the function f. So this function evaluates nicely to and has the finite value 0, but this finite value 0 is not the limit of this function at 0. Now if uh, it is not a good idea to compute the value of the function at the limit point, it may be a good idea to compute a table of values near the limit point. In this example, we look at uh, the expression x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1, and I have computed its value when x equals 0 0.9, the value is 1.9. When x equals 0 0.999, the value is 1.999. And when x equals 0 0.99999, the value 
after rounding becomes 2.000. Likewise, when x equals 1.1, the value is 2.1. When x equals 1.001, the value is 2.001. And when x equals 1.00001, the value is 2. And this table leads us to guess that the actual limit of this function is 2. And this is indeed correct in this case, because x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 can be simplified. x squared minus 1 is x minus 1 times x plus 1. We divide that by x minus 1, x minus 1 cancels out, and the expression simplifies to x plus 1. And x plus 1 clearly approaches 2 as x, x approaches 1. This is completely obvious. So by this rewriting, x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 as x plus 1, we may be able to compute precisely that the actual limit is 2. And that confirms also to the computations given by these tables. Guessing limits with uh, straightforward calculations of the values of the function near the limit point may lead to completely wrong conclusions. As an example of that type of a situation, consider the expression square root of 1 plus x to the fourth minus 1 and that difference divided by x to the fourth. The task is to compute the limit of this expression as x approaches 0. Now, if we simply evaluate the function near the point x equals 0, we get the following table. When x is either plus or minus 0 0.1, the value of this expression is 0 0.4999. When x is either plus or minus 0 0.01, the value is 0 0.5000. But when x is either plus or minus 0 0.001, the value seems to be zero. And this table suggests that the limit may be zero as x approaches zero. But this is incorrect and this is due to rounding errors. This kind of a phenomenon happens when computing limits and it is important to be able to deal with it. So here I have plotted the graph of this function f of x equals square root of 1 plus x to the fourth minus 1 divided by x to the fourth. Between negative 1 and 1, the graph looks nice, round, smooth graph, which has a limit as x approaches 0. But when one zooms into near 0, the graph looks like this red graph here, and this red graph does not show us the values of the function, it shows us rounding errors. So one cannot make any conclusions by computing the values of the function near the point zero because of rounding errors that happen. To summarize this discussion, let us recall the definition. The limit of a function f at a number x zero is the number which the values of the function f, that is the numbers f of x approach, as x approaches x zero. And we should pay attention to the fact that the value of the function f at x equals x zero does not affect the limit at all. Now by approach here we mean that the values of f get arbitrarily close to the limit value as x gets sufficiently close to the limit number x zero. In precise terms, getting arbitrarily close to the limit value is expressed as getting closer than any given positive distance epsilon. And sufficiently close then means that there is a positive number delta such that whenever x is closer than the distance delta from the limit point x0 but is not the limit point then the values of the function are closer to the limit value than the distance epsilon. This picture illustrates this situation. And mathematically, using mathematical notation, 
one writes that limit as x approaches x0 f of x equals l if and only if for all positive numbers epsilon one can find a positive number delta such that whenever 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus x0 and that is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. This is the precise mathematical definition of limits. For us in this class the heuristic definition is just fine. Even though for the moment we rely on the not so precise heuristic definition of limits that uh, I gave in the beginning of this lecture, we should observe that limits cannot be computed by computing function values numerically. Such numeric computations of the values of the function near the limit point may lead to a correct result regarding what the limit might be, but it may also lead to complete wrong understanding of the behavior of the function, as was illustrated by this expression square root of 1 plus x to the fourth minus 1 and that difference divided by x to the fourth. So limits must be computed by other ways, not only evaluating the function near the limit point. These tricks will be explained later.